It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, Therefore, if any man, well, who would that work for? Anybody. Everybody say anybody. anybody. If anybody, any person, is in Christ, in Christ. So what he's doing there is describing what happened when you made Jesus your Lord. What happened? What happened? You know, after the last election, the one who lost has written a book called What Happened? <laughs> I'm sure the devil has a book like that. <laughs> what happened? Because it looked like he had you whipped and defeated and on your way to hell, but something happened on the cross and the death and the resurrection of Christ that Jesus changes everything. But you have to know what happened. Everybody say, what happened? what happened? So in Paul's letters, he tells you what happened in Christ. In Christ. Or in the four Gospels, you see what happened to Christ. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you see what happened to Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection. But in Paul's letters, he tells you what happened in Christ. In Christ. Or you could say it this way, Paul's letters tell you what man saw, and or, or the four Gospels tells you what man saw, or you see what happened from the outside. Paul's revelation tells you what God saw or what happened in the Spirit. So I like to say it this way, that the four Gospels are a photograph of redemption, and the Paul's letters are an x-ray. The four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you see Jesus dying, Jesus buried, and Jesus raised. So the four Gospels are a photograph of our redemption. But in Paul's letters, they're an x-ray. He tells you what happened in Christ or what happened in the Spirit. Or he tells you what God saw. Or he tells you what the angels saw. Or he tells you even what the devil saw when Jesus died and when he was raised from the dead. So Paul's number one terminology is the two words, in Christ, what happened in Christ. So you could say it this way, God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every man. All right, we'll try that again. God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every person. Or you could say it this way, God put into Christ everything he wanted you to have. Amen. So he says, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creation. creation or a new creature. New, what does that mean? The word new there means new in kind or new in quality. It literally means unheard of before. Unheard of before. In other words, you're a new creature in Christ, not just new according to a new day, but new according to kind. So it's led some to translate that a new species of being that never existed before. So what God did in Christ, I like to say it this way. He says, old things have passed away. Everything has become new. Everything. Everything. Everybody say everything. everything. Or you could say Jesus did not go through the suffering of the cross and his death to be raised from the dead just to help you a little bit. Wow. Wow. In other words, what Jesus did on the cross and in his death and in his resurrection literally changes everything. Yeah. Wow. Everybody say, this changes everything. This changes everything. everything. Amen. Amen. The way you see yourself, the way you see other people, come on, your perspective on life. So if any person is in Christ, they become a new kind of creature that never existed before. Amen. Hmm. Amen. So what are you in Christ? Well, the Apostle Paul uses the two words in Christ, in him, or in whom, 130 times. 
130. When I was 17 years old, Kenneth E. Hagan, Dad Hagan, came to my dad's church. He actually came first when I was eight years old. I didn't start paying attention until I was 17. <laughs> and honestly, I'd just gotten out of jail. My dad and four deacons came and got me out of jail at 17. So I figured it'd be a good time to start paying attention. <laughs> so when Dad Hagan came and taught, here's what he said. He said, there's many ways to study the Bible, many ways. He said, but the one I recommend above all others is to go through Paul's epistles or Paul's letters. And every time you see the two words, in Christ, in him, in whom, circle or underline those two words because that's describing something you are or something you have because you are in Christ. In other words, it's not describing something you're trying to be, something you need to be, something you ought to be. It's describing something God produced for you in Christ. And the moment you are in Christ, amen, you got at least 130, but really there's only about 35 that are super significant in Christ's scriptures. So when I was a teenager, Praise the Lord, me and Pastor Rob probably started off the same way. When I was a teenager, I just did what Dad Hagen said. I just started going through Paul's letters. And every time I saw the two words, in Christ, I'd underline it, then I made a list. And then every morning, I would get up and I would say, this is who I am, and this is what I have, because I'm in Christ. And Dad Hagen said, you actually just look a lot better in Christ than you do outside of him. We just try that one more time. I said, you actually look a lot better in Christ than you do outside of him. Amen. 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 So just to understand a little bit about Paul's letters, which would be Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians. So I started going through those. To understand those letters, actually, here's the way James Stalker said it. He said, Paul's letters contain the thoughts that Jesus carried away from this world unuttered. All right, one more time. You ready? Paul's letters contain the thoughts that Jesus carried away from this world unuttered. You say, what does that mean? That means when Jesus spoke to them in John 16, he said, I have many things to tell you, but I cannot tell you now. When are you going to tell us? He said, when the Holy Spirit comes, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. In other words, he said, it's too difficult for you to understand it, but when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to take you into the reality of what happened in Christ in his death and resurrection and what it has produced in us when we believe God. Amen. In other words, the moment you make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, the moment you receive him as your Lord, what happened is that you are now in Christ. Yes, sir. One writer actually described what happened to you is you are now in Christed. Wow. You just got in Christed. Wow. Hmm. All right. What does that mean to be in Christ? Well, the word Christ means the Messiah, the anointed one, and the word in. What's the word in? Well, the word in is simply a preposition. It's a preposition. Well, I was reading by one writer, and he said, uh, actually, the key to the gospel is in the prepositions. I thought, man, I should have paid attention in English class. <laughs> he said, the key to the gospel is in the prepositions. <coughs> the prepositions? Well, so uh, I said, well, what is a preposition? Preposition is just a little word that connects. It's just a connecting word, and it connects nouns, come on, pronouns, and connects to other nouns and pronouns, and shows relationship in whatever verb or activity is going on. All right. That'd help you a little bit. Let's, let me show you some. So the key to the gospel is in the prepositions. So let me give you these prepositions. Little words like for, with, in, through, and by are the key to the gospel. He said, but the English language was not constructed for a preposition to carry the kind of weight that the gospel calls upon it to carry. So the English language breaks down under the weight and the prepositions go almost unnoticed. All right, well, let me give some prepositions. Ready? All right. In Christ. Come on, 130 times. In him, in, in whom? So in Christ, 
And most translators won't even mess with the two words in Christ. They may add in union with Christ. Uh, let's see how this works. Let's look at the word for. That means everything Jesus did, He did it for us. Other ways to translate that would be in our behalf. Right. Everything He did, He did it for us. Actually, Romans 4.25 says He was delivered up for our sins, our iniquities, and He was raised for our justification. Yeah. What does that mean? That means Jesus was not raised from the dead until you were declared righteous. Yeah. For Amen. Christ has redeemed us. Come on. He hath redeemed us. Yes. And he was made a curse for us. All right, listen close. Everything God did in Christ, he did it for you, and it's set to the credit of your account like you were there. Wow. So, in the mind of God, in the economy of God, God, you were crucified with Christ. So, let's go here. For, he did it for us. For, with. With, what does that mean? That means I was crucified with him. Oh, but let me give you another one. This ought to make you happy. Let's see if we can get you happy just for a minute. He says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 through 6, it says, God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses and sin, he made us alive together with Christ. All right, and hath raised us up together with Christ and hath made us sit down together with, everybody say with, with, with him. That means I was made alive with him, yeah. raised up with him, yeah. seated together with him. Hallelujah. That means the fight of faith starts from up here. Yeah. All right, let's try that again. Uh, come on, there is a fight to faith, but you're really not fighting for victory. You're fighting from victory. Or you could say it this way. You take your place in Christ, seated with him, and fight the fight of faith from up here. Praise the Lord. Now, let me explain it to you this way. I brought my grandson, Gavin. And Gavin, and we try to take different ones as we can. Gavin, of course, is one of our favorites, right, Gavin? So, and Gavin is so blessed, and so uh, he, he calls himself uh, G-Money. All right, G-Money means he's blessed. All right, so Gavin, I had some great experience with Gavin. He's a second, uh, my daughter's second child. And when he was born, he was, you know, sickly, so we had to hold him a lot and, and pray over him a lot. We called him our little tree frog because he'd get real close and hold, and, and, I, and I'd hold on to him, you know, and, and I'd whisper and sing to him, Jesus is making you well. And so he's perfectly well today. Jesus is making you well. All right. But we have eight grandkids, eight grandkids. Y'all know my poem, right? Here's the eight grandkids. My poem is, I've been, I've seen the lights of Paris, seen the lights of Rome, but I've never seen nothing as beautiful as the taillights of that car taking my grandkids home. But anyway, no, I'm just kidding, Dad. I'm just kidding, Dad. So, we were happy when they came, and boy, we was happy then. But anyway, so, so Gavin's one of my favorites, right? Get, get up, Gavin, just for a second. And so, Gavin, all eight grandkids, and so at our house, we got so many things. Stand up where your granny can take a picture of you. Say, take a picture of granny. So, so Gavin, uh, all the grandkids come to our house. And they all have games, outdoors, little cars they can ride. They got swings, got swimming pool, all kinds of stuff. And I'd say, who wants to come and give Poppy a hug? And they'd say, sorry, Poppy, we're busy, we're busy, we're busy. But Gavin, he had always come right to where I'm at, and he'd give me a hug. Okay. He said, I love you, Poppy. And I'd say, here's what I say to Gavin. I say, Gavin, while all the other kids are playing with the toys, you're getting close to the one who bought all the toys. <laughs> right, sit down here. So, so since we have a swimming pool in the backyard, so we uh, we uh, make all the grandkids take swimming lessons. We make them when they're very young. And not only do they have to take swimming lessons, I pay for all the swimming lessons. And since I pay for them, then I inspect them to see if they can swim. <laughs> right? 
Well, you have a shallow end and a deep end, and I found out that they can all swim in the shallow end. <laughs> so I don't give them a test in the shallow end, right? So Gavin, he had taken some swimming lessons, and so Caleb, my son-in-law, we were out standing by the pool, and we happened to be standing out by the diving board, and so uh, uh, Caleb, oh, Poppy, that Gavin, he's taking those swimming lessons, and boy, he can really swim now. He can really swim. I said, is that right? Yep, Poppy, I'm swimming now. This was a few years ago. I'm swimming now. I said, really, Gavin, you can swim? Uh, Caleb bragging, he's just trying to be positive, you know, but I'd kind of been watching Gavin, and I really didn't think he could swim. In the shallow end, he could swim. So we have me standing by the diving board in the deep end. So his daddy said, oh, he can really swim. I said, can he swim? Good. So I grabbed Gavin and just threw him right in the deep end. I said, I said, show Poppy how you can swim. Shoo, like that in the deep end. And I watched Caleb, his daddy, he went. Some people may think that's cruel, but I don't want that to happen when I'm not around. So I'm fixing to inspect. So I just dropped him in the deep end. And now here's what Gavin did. He sunk. He sunk, and then he was making swimming motions underwater. You can see him. He's like. <laughs> he's still sinking. I look at Caleb. I said, if I was you, I'd jump in there and save him. He hands me his phone, his wallet, he jumps in, pulls Gavin out. I said, now you go back to swimming lessons and there will be another test. I ain't going to argue about it. I just display one, he cannot swim. So be a positive all you want, but he cannot swim. We don't want to drown positive, he cannot swim. So when you start talking about who you are in Christ, you start talking about faith or how faith works, immediately some people, all, they just kind of turn you off because they've heard that a lot. But if the things of life get a little bit rough and they get in the deep end, come on, and they're sinking, come on, and they're sinking, and they're making swimming motions, good Christian motions. Good charismatic Christian motions while they're sinking. <laughs> then you're going to have to get back out and take your lessons again. Are y'all still here? Because God's not interested in you looking cute while you're sinking. Come on. God wants you to win. I said he wants you to win. Jesus made provision for you to win. So what we're talking about is not just a bunch of theology. We're talking about the reality of your redemption in Christ. Oh, man. Amen. Amen. And so everything God did in Christ, he did it for each one of us. Our identification with Christ. Go look at Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20. Are you ready? This is what we call the Apostle Paul's confession, which Christianity called the great confession. Are you ready? Galatians 2.20. Here's what it says. I am. Well, it's good to find out who I am. Starts off with I am. Uh, that I am would change every other I am. Wow, wow. All right. I said that I am can change every other I am. Amen. Right? I am weak. I am tired. I am broke. I am struggling. <laughs> I am. No, this is an I am, come on, that comes from the great I am. I am crucified with Christ. Why is that important? Well, because the outcome is a lot better if you're crucified with Christ. In other words, you could kill yourself. The problem is, is you just cannot pull off a resurrection. <laughs> So we encourage you, don't try to deal with this by yourself. No matter how miserable you are, you say, I think the only way to end this is to kill myself. Good. Well, the best way to do it is go to the cross and be crucified with Christ. 
because when you submit to his death, there's immediate resurrection life that will come. Christ took me to the cross with him. Paul says that, I know this, my old man, the old person I used to be was crucified with Christ. Other translation says, my old evil identity was crucified with Christ. I know this. Later on he says, now reckon, meditate on this and declare this, your identification with Christ because death really will get to the root of your problem. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Jesus did not go through the agony of the death, burial, and resurrection to help us just a little bit. What happened from the cross to the throne in those three days changed everything. God wants you to understand who you are and what you have now in Christ. Learn your true identity with the book, Taking Your Place in Christ. Many Christians talk about what they are trying to be, what they need to be, and what they're going to be. Put on the new man by declaring who you are in Christ. Have you ever struggled to find your identity and God's purpose for your life? You have a supernatural identity in Christ. Get the book, The Power of Identification with Christ, and find out your true identity. You must have a change of identity to reach your divine destiny. With the spirit of wisdom and revelation, God will show you who you are in Christ. When you order these books, as a bonus, we will send you the three CD set, What Happened in Christ. Everything Jesus did in his death, burial and resurrection, he did it for you. Get the books and the CD set today. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the books Taking Your Place in Christ and The Power of Identification with Christ and the three CD set, What Happened in Christ. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Take your place in Christ today. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today. We trust that you were so blessed and you received so much revelation from the message that my dad shared. I know I'm always so blessed by everything that he preaches and teaches us comes from a well of revelation. And I'm so glad to get to be a part of listening to that. My parents wanna make sure that you also get that opportunity, not only just tuning in, but also getting this by way of book into your home. We wanna get this book to you for your gift of any amount. And what's so awesome about your gift of any amount is that it's gonna to go toward the, the finishing of Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. It's exciting at what God is doing with Mark Hankins Ministry, getting this conference center up and going. We're super excited about it, and we wanna make sure that you get to be a part of that. So for your gift of any amount, you can call the number on the screen, or you can go to markhankins.org, and we will get this message to you. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. Have a great day. My name is Teresa Gasner. I live in Massachusetts. I'm a member of Living Word Church in Rockland, Massachusetts, under Pastor Ed and Judy Daniels. At Living Word Church, I'm the director of In Christ International Bible College Extension Campus, and Mark Hankins Ministries invited my pastors to a, a meeting or a conference that took place in upstate New York. And at that conference, they talked about In Christ International Bible College, and we really feel that that was a kind of a divine appointment because um, Pastor Ed and Pastor Judy for a long time desired to have a Bible school at the church to uh, disciple 
people and to um, develop leaders. And so we learned that <clears throat> it's possible to start an extension campus. It's a fully accredited program and they provide the, the, all the tools that we need, the syllabus, the, uh, the textbooks, and we provide the teachers. The students love it. They love the curriculum. They love the, the, the books, the textbooks. And we have students aging from young 20s to uh, over 70 years old. And we have students who are newly born Christians we don't know very much about the Bible, and we have students who are more mature Christians, um, but that the anointing is on the curriculum that flows through Mark Hankins Ministries. And so everybody is learning, everybody's receiving from the program. And the students who are graduating from this college, we, we know they have a firm foundation. They, they know what to teach accurately. Um, they, they know how to use the Bible. They, knew, they know where to go when they have questions and they know the love of God and they know who they are in Christ. There is a, a progressive learning, progressive courses to learn who you are in Christ, how much God loves you, um, and then delve deeper into the Bible, into topics of um, the, the church and, and how our, our role in, in the church and determining how God would use us. So through In Christ International Bible College, my relationship with Mark Kankin's ministries has developed. I found them to be very an emphasis on relationship, coming to the Supernatural Leadership Conference and the, the camp meetings and uh, having this ministry, having my family expanded by the people in this ministry and being under the anointing. I've, you know, just as a teacher, I've learned so much more about how important it is to have revelation of who we are in Christ. It's, it's been a blessing to me personally. It's, it's provided me with a, with a role, with a, a way to serve and a way to continue learning while I'm able to minister to other people. It, it's, been, it's been a blessing. I, I feel like there is a, a future and, um, and a hope and just uh, the, the reward of being able to impact people's life in a positive way. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.